We're going to do an update on WooCommerce payments for 2022. Sometimes the settings for PayPal and Stripe, etc. change and you sometimes get confused with, well, where do I click and what do I do? We're going to go in and have a look right now. We're in WordPress, we're in WooCommerce and we are going to go to payments in case you were wondering, where do I go? And when you go in, you will have options. You have WooCommerce payments, direct bank transfer, check payments, cash on delivery. If you're going to go for one of these three, fine, you go in and you set yourself up. Okay, that's all going to be down to your bank accounts and how you want to do things. But what if you want to get PayPal or Stripe? This is where you need to install the WooCommerce payments option. Now, at this point, if you decide you want to use PayPal or Stripe, you might be tempted to hit WooCommerce payments, but it doesn't exactly make it clear here. But when you do install, that's actually going to install the functionality for Stripe, which if you hadn't already realized, if you scroll down is over here. So recommended ways to get paid Stripe or PayPal, obviously two of the most popular ones in the world. So if you hit WooCommerce payments at the top over here and do install, it's the same as if you hit get started here. I'm going to go for both of them, okay? I'm going to go for Stripe payments and I'm going to go for PayPal. Of course, though, if you are planning to do Visa, debit card and all of these stuff as well, you might as well do the WooCommerce payments. So sorry if I made it sound confusing. What we're going to do is I'm going to do WooCommerce payments first, show you what that enables, and then we'll do the other ones. So let's just go ahead and install this. Now, when you hit install, it's basically getting the plugin and adding it on. These are free, okay? The Stripe, the PayPal, this one as well, they are free for you to use, okay? So don't sit there worrying about, you're gonna have to pay a cost for it. First thing it does is open this up and it's now gonna say, do you wanna finish your setup? You'll then be asked to enter in your email address, which you do, and you get an email where you have to now verify that. Just click connect to verify. It then goes through this process where it's now authorizing your connection. And you might go, God, this is very long winded, isn't it? These are just some of the steps you got to go through. And look, just like I said to you, when you install it, you're actually doing Stripe. It'd be nice if they made that clear right at the start, because there might be someone who goes and installs Stripe, installs PayPal, and then they hit WooCommerce payments and it starts to get a little bit confusing. So I do recommend WooCommerce. Please make that clear in your descriptions on what your people are doing. But what you would then do now here is you would now put in your phone number and you would now register with Stripe. You're then just going to give them a few more details about where you're located and what your type of business is. I'm going to go for United Kingdom and I'm going to say that I am a company. Now, when you do this, OK, don't hit continue. You've got to stop and think. If you say you're a company, you're going to have to then now start to provide Stripe with some credentials about your business in terms of company registration number and other details like that. So if you don't have those details at hand, go and get them or understand that when you hit continue, it's then going to say, OK, you now need to get as copies of that before we can fully set you up. So if you need to get your shop open like really, really quickly, do all the homework early on before you start to do this process. I'm going to put this back to individual sole trader and I'm going to click continue. What you then have to do is set up your account. Now, currently we're in a test account uh, setting at the moment, but what you would now do is from your bank, get your IBAN and your account number, right? Make sure you double check that this is correct because this is where Stripe is going to pay you. Now, this is where you are going to get asked for ID verification. Now, if you don't have this information readily available for you and it's not, it's not that difficult, you know, take a picture with your webcam or with your phone, you can just use use test document, okay? And previously where we were doing the IBAN as well, you could just hit use test account as well just to get through the process quicker. And then you can provide the details later on. In fact, I would probably recommend doing that to get through to the end of the process. Let's just say use test document. And I'm going to say, uh, we'll use my driver's license. OK, and then I will say continue to upload. But for now, I'm just going to say use test document or be another screen which now just verifies or confirms everything you entered and you hit done. Now, remember, I haven't put my IBAN number in and I haven't put in my driver's license verification. I just said use the test account, use the test documents to get through it. This is now in effect kind of set up. And it is now telling us that thanks for verifying, blah, 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 because we're using a test account and WooCommerce payments is in test mode. So what we now do is click this to go back into WooCommerce. Now, please remember, though, you are going to have to verify, you know, log back into Stripe. You know, you'll get emails, etc., for your account details and all that. You do need to go back in and verify properly. Otherwise, it won't work. So this, again, is reminding us that, look, everything is simulated. OK, 
until it is all properly verified, etc. With Stripe, you can't actually do real transactions, but that's okay. We've got enable WooCommerce payments. This is all in a uh, dev mode at the moment. Okay, so. WooCommerce payments is now set up, but it was going through the Stripe process, okay? So if you're gonna do it, do this rather than Stripe on its own, because now it's kind of set up with Apple as well, Apple payments, etc. So that's all really, really good. And you can take credit card and debit card uh, payments as well, if you don't wanna go via the PayPal route. Now we're gonna scroll down, and I'm just gonna double check any of the settings that we've got here for WooCommerce payments, okay? We've got express checkouts, that's fine. That's where you can very quickly just check out. You know, uh, you don't have to set up a, uh, a, a guest account or anything like that. Further details about your transaction in terms of how is it gonna appear on the bank statement, enable payments via save cards, that's all pretty self-explanatory. So I'm just gonna hit save changes for now. That is WooCommerce payments, but we haven't even got onto PayPal yet. Now I'm gonna go back over here and click all payment methods, okay? Just so we're back into our screen again where we can see what's enabled. You got the manage button there. And I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna to go to PayPal. Now, I do wanna just very quickly hit Stripe payments, okay? Just to show you what's gonna happen if we did that. We go here, it's now gonna say create an account. So I'm gonna click it and this is where you're now gonna to start to go back through the entire same process again. And I would just say that, is it really worth that? I think you're defeating the object and you're gonna to start to have multiple Stripe accounts. And my recommendation is you don't do that. Do the WooCommerce payments, absolutely brilliant, fantastic. But you don't need to do the Stripe again. What you can now do is jump onto the PayPal one. I will be honest, okay, um, if you were interested in all of these extra um, account details like um, Boleto, Oxo, Alipay, Ideal, GyroPay, okay, all of these items, I can understand why you would want to do that. But uh, in the UK, I think the WooCommerce payment and the PayPal is more than enough. Okay, let's just scroll down here and get on with the PayPal one now. It's pretty instantaneous this, to be honest. So you're gonna do connect to PayPal. So what you do is you put in your email address and where you're based and you go through the process. Now, if you're using your personal PayPal account, you will be told you've got to convert it into a business account. And this is where you will go through some further steps. So it'll, you will then have to, well, you'll convert and then it will take you through to PayPal and it will then say, right, um, do you have a company number? How many um, directors or, or shareholders are there? If you say there's just you, it's relatively easy to get through the process. You put your name, your details in, etc. If you say there are four directors or four shareholders, there's other people in the business, not just you, you then have to get a form almost like signed by them. Now, normally though, you can just add their details in and say, yep, yeah, I as the main director or whatever, or the owner of this account, I am authorizing these three or four other people to also have a shared ownership of the business, okay? You're not using their email address, you're just putting in their name, address, and things like that. Those names and, and addresses must be registered with the company. So anyone out there who's a business and there's you, your brother and your sister are part of this company and you have not declared them as having an equal or whatever share of your business, okay? If you put their names into here when you come to do the full-on verification and their names are not on the company register, PayPal will check. Believe it or not, they check. They don't just go, yeah, okay, carry on, go away and do what you want. They do verify, okay? So if this is a business on your own, you would convert your account to a business account I mean, if I'm honest with you, I would keep them separate. I have my personal account for personal stuff, and I have a separate PayPal account for my business stuff, okay? Because that is the business account. So have a think about, are you just gonna use the same PayPal account that you use when you buy stuff off eBay and Amazon and whatever? Because it can get a bit messy when you come to tax auditing and stuff like that. So my recommendation is you get a completely separate PayPal account set up. It's a bit like Stripe. You just set up a separate account, right, for Stripe. Do the same for PayPal and go through the verification process. Now, I am not going to do anything more here because I don't, I've already got a business account. And if I go through this, it's then going to say, okay, great, you've now created it. And then it will then say, okay, now do your verification process, okay? Um, give us your company registration. Give us your company address. Are there any other directors or shareholders like that? You put in all of their details. 
you hit verify. It can take a day or two. Now, I didn't mention it for Stripe, but when you do the proper verification with Stripe, it can take a week before you're fully verified. With PayPal, it can take a day or two, okay? So if you need to do all this and your business is opening tomorrow, you want to be doing all of this at least two weeks before you open your business and get started. Believe me, you really want, because the last thing you want is you open your business, you've got a shop, and no one can buy anything. Well, they can, but you're not going to get any money and the money gets lost somewhere or whatever. Um, but you want to make sure you do this process. Now, once you've done that, OK, this will all be enabled. And once it's enabled with the correct email address, you're good to go. So I'm sorry that I'm not going through the steps because I've already got them set up. But you either convert your personal to a business and then go through the extra verification steps or you set up a brand new business account. So that when you, when you get asked, well, are you converting or is this already a business account? You've probably already done it. Like I said, if you set up a new PayPal uh, account and then you select that to be your business, you can get all of that done, right? Done and dusted. So when you get onto this process or this bit here, it is all fully connected. And that in a nutshell, OK, which is a very big, long nutshell, OK, is how you can start to handle your settings. And that is how you set up your payments. So my recommendation is you definitely do WooCommerce payments. because It's the whole Stripe, Apple, all that stuff. You definitely do the PayPal as well. But you only bother with the Stripe extra stuff if you need to start thinking about all of these extra things here. So if you see them and you go, yeah, OK, yeah, I definitely want all of this, then go for it. Now, you will have noticed that when we installed PayPal, if I just go to uh, open this in a new tab and I open that one, which is the card pressing, I'm just going to show you the difference between them. So this is what we were already doing, where you would connect to your business account. Here, though, in the other tab is the PayPal card processing. OK, um, this, though, is um, this kind of would become available once you've done your first PayPal one. And this is now saying that you don't need to have a PayPal account if you want to pay by credit and debit card. But to be honest, if you've done the Stripe or the WooCommerce payments, you already have this option anyway. So when I do things, I tend to go with just PayPal. And then I go, OK, mm, you know, PayPal card processing handles the fact that you haven't got a PayPal account, but you can still pay by your credit card or your debit card. If I really want to think about Apple payments and all of that stuff as well, then I'll set up the WooCommerce payments because that will include Apple and Stripe within there. But you just have to think about where's the majority of your audience and what are you trying to satisfy? Look, I hope this all helps or not, but I hope it helps. Helps you start thinking about what exactly do you need. I hope you like, subscribe, share and follow. You know, please share. Stick this video on your blog. You know, let people know about it. Put a link in. And I'll keep seeing you. Take care.